Peace and blessings, y'all, in this corner, Boxing 24. Good afternoon. How's everyone doing today? Hope everybody's doing pretty good. I'm doing okay on this side, as always. God is great. God is good, and I definitely can't complain. Yeah, I'm wearing that Laker hat. I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a LeBron man, okay? Greatest, the GOAT. LeBron is the GOAT. Say what you want. That's a whole other subject. We're here to talk about boxing, all right? In this corner box in 24, please subscribe to the page. Please leave a comment. Let me know how you feel. So, Shakur Stevenson, who's the most avoided fighter in boxing today, in my opinion, he's the top most ordered, most avoided, uh, avoided fighter after Jerron Boots Ennis. And Jerron Boots Ennis is next. And then, it's, of course, it's uh, David Benavidez. And um, those are my top three most avoided fighters. But I want to talk about Shakur and Edwin De Los Santos because Shakur, you know, talked about the fact that he believes De Los Santos is a tougher opponent for him than Frank Martin. On paper, he said, so far. Um, when you look at the record of Edwin De Los Santos and you look at his fight game, he's 16-1 with 14 knockouts, which means he has 17 fights with 14 knockouts. That's a great ratio. I think his knockout percentage is about 82%. And Frank Martin is 18 and over 12 knockouts. Now, I would say, looking at the skill set of both of them, I would say Frank Martin could be a little better boxer. And I think he's a little better defensively. A little bit better. He's not a great defensive fighter, and neither is Edwin De Los Santos. We know Shakur Stevenson is a great defensive fighter. He, he's a counter puncher, good speed, decent power, and he knows how to control the range, which is very, very important. If I can control the range, if I can control the distance, right, to keep you at bay, and I'm able to get my shots off, and then when you come back, I'm able to slide back, I'm able to move, I'm able to block, I'm able to do the things I need to do to not get hit or not get hit flush, that's boxing one-on-one, -on -one. all right? Defense number one. And that's Shakur Stevenson. He going to make you miss, he going to make you pay. And to those who keep saying that he ain't got no power, well, listen, man, the man only got 20, 20 fights and he got 10 knockouts. That's not bad. That's half, okay? So we got to see how his, his career is not over yet. So don't hate and don't miscalculate. Like, let him keep going on and on and see what he does because he's at 135 now and I think his power is going to show more at this at this weight because he got less pounds to take off to to fulfill his walk around weight or the weight he's going to be fighting at so he's going to be better to 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 hydrate and I think that power is going to be there now Edwin De Los Santos he's a strong fighter He's very strong, and it seems like he, he, he likes to hit you and catch you in, in between the exchanges. And, um, you know, he's going to try it with, with Shakur, but it's just not going to be as successful as he's been with everybody else because, again, Shakur is a thinker. He's defensive. He's a counterpuncher. So it's not going to work the same way. Y'all, you guys, are, you know, when you like somebody, it's okay, but you got to be able to see, man, that... When a fighter is special, he makes the other fighters look ordinary. Floyd Mayweather made you look ordinary. Terrence Boyd Crawford made Spence look ordinary, amongst the other fighters, too. He made them look ordinary, too, pretty much. But definitely Errol Spence, who was the boogeyman, who was the bully in the welterweight division, right? The unified champion, he made him look ordinary. And some of y'all still can't handle that. Some of y'all still have a problem with that. Y'all still trying to make excuses for this man, even though he's not saying a word. He don't even know if he wants to rematch it. But y'all still saying it was the way. He didn't look right. Something was wrong. But I know when he came in that ring, he was pounding his chest. And he was on the way to the ring. He looked fine to me. But anyway, we're talking about Shakur Stevenson. Shakur Stevenson is like that too. He's special like that. And he's going to make the average fighter or the fighter that y'all say is stronger, faster, is a threat to him. He's going to make him look ordinary. That doesn't mean Edwin De La Santos is not going to have some moments with him. It's like Zab Judah has some moments with Floyd. Just like Shane Mosey has some moments with Floyd. But what was the end result? That's what we look about. Look at. The race is not to the swift, but to the one that can endure to the end. 
And Shakur is that long lasting fighter. He's that fighter that is going to be there. Okay. And he's going to capitalize off your mistakes because he's a thinker. All right. So he said that he thinks that Taylor Santos is a tougher opponent. And Frank Martin is not a bad opponent. I think Frank, Frank Martin would have Put, put a, presented some different challenges than Edward De Los Santos, and he got some decent power too. I think Floyd, I mean, pardon me, I think Shakur Stevenson beats them both, right? On a given day, but you want to be challenged as well to see what you're working with, right? So I just think Frank Martin has better footwork, better boxing skills, and that would have been good to see Shakur with him too. Edward De Los Santos is coming, I think he's, he's talking a lot, but we're gonna see if he's walking a lot, right? Because he's doing a lot of talking, but we're gonna see if he can walk, right? Because when he get in that ring, you're gonna have to walk. Now, you're gonna come out on fire, you're gonna come out hype, confident, it's all good. But when you start missing and start getting tapped and start getting hit, don't get discouraged. You gotta fight your fight. But Shakur is that fighter that's gonna make you do something different and come out of that game. And when he fights somebody that's strong like this, that's coming to really fight and win, that's going to just raise his fight level. That's what it does. See, Errol Spence helped Crawford to raise his fight level. He was already a special fighter. But now I'm fighting this dude. He coming to hurt me. He said he's going to break my face. He's going to hurt me. He's going to stop me. He's going for the knockout. Oh, I'm going to go to another level. And that's what happens, right? So I think that's what we're going to see with Shakur. You're going to make this strong fighter who got 14 knockouts and 17 fights. You're going to make him look like an like a ordinary fighter, man. He's going to outbox him. You know, he going, we're going to tap him up. He's going to put some hurt on him, man. This is what's going to happen. This is just my humble opinion. So I'm looking forward to that fight. And I'm looking forward to Shakur doing some big and great things in 2024 because this is, you know, they fighting in November. So, you know, um, yeah, next year, 2024, after this, and they fighting for the WBC belt. How is that? Devin Haney is undisputed, right? But he's the WBC champion in recess. So because he's fighting Regis Program at 140, there's a recess. And that's the belt that Edwin De La Santos and Shakur Stevenson are fighting for. So we're looking forward to that fight. Okay? So that's all I really got for today, y'all. Peace and blessings in this corner box in 24. Please subscribe to the page. Please leave your comments. Let me know how you feel. Everybody enjoy the rest of your day. Please be safe out there. Peace.